Hello, in this end-to-end -end data engineering and data analysis project, I'm going to show you how to create Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 in Microsoft Azure Platform. And then we're going to create a shortcut to connect to that data set without physically loading data into our Fabric Lake House. And then we're going to build a Power BI report on top of the data in the Lake House shortcuts. Before we dive into this project, let's understand what is ADLS Gen 2. It is basically a scalable and secure cloud-based storage service as part of the Microsoft Azure service. And it is designed to store and manage large amount of data such as files, images, videos, and logs. So let's go into this project. And we're going to be going through this flow. So we want to actually start off in the Microsoft Azure, and then we move on to creating ADLS Gen 2. And then we're going to create external shortcuts in the Fabric, and then we're going to move on to creating our Power BI report. This is my portal.azure.com. First thing I want to do is to create the ADLS Gen 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this ADLS resource. At the top left-hand corner, I'm going to click on Create. And then that's going to take me to the marketplace. And then I can search for the Azure Data Lake Storage. So I'm going to come and type in Azure Data Lake Gen 2 and press Enter. So we're going to see this storage account, which basically allows us to use blobs, tables, queues, files, and data lake for reliable and cost-effective cloud storage service. So click on that. And then we want to go ahead and create our storage account. So click on create. In the create a storage account, under the basics tabs, we can go on under the project details, specify our subscription. So I'm going to be using my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And of course, we can select a resource group that's going to hold the ADLS. So basically, you can create a new one, but I've got some resource group. So I'm going to focus on the ADLS resource. And then I'm going to scroll down. Next, for the instance details, we can provide a name for the storage account. So I'm just going to call this Fabric Shortcuts. And of course, this is going to tell me whether it is used or not. So I'm just going to add extra 101. And let's see whether it's going to accept. OK, this is lovely. And then we can specify the region where to host our data. So basically, I'm going to go with the UK South. And of course, for the performance, I'm going to go with the standard, which is the recommended for the scenario that is general purpose V2 account. And I'm going to scroll down. Basically, for the redundancy, I'm going to stick with the default geo redundant storage GRS. And of course, I want to click on the next button. And then on that advanced tab, I'm going to leave all the security as they were. And I'm going to scroll down. And very importantly, under the hierarchical namespace, I'm going to enable hierarchical namespace, which is really important for me to access my Azure data storage tool. So that's all I need to do. I can scroll down. I can see all other information like this blob storage and so on and so forth. Click on the next. And then I can, of course, check the networking. So this is going to be enable public access from all networks. This simply means I can actually access my ADLS from any IP address without any restriction. So I'm going to go on to next and then for the date to section, I can specify the recovery and so on and so forth. So basically, I want to move to the review and create. So this is going to validate the process and we're going to wait for maybe three seconds. And there we go. So we can see the summary of all our information. So click on create and it's going to start deploying the ADLS and they're going to wait for a few seconds. OK, so the deployment is complete and I can click on go to resource. So I can see the newly created Fabric Shortcut 101 storage account, which is lovely. And I'm going to wait for the overview to come up in a moment. All right, there we go. So we can see the overview. We can see the essential information like the resource group that is holding the ADLS. We can see the location, the primary, secondary location, the subscription, and so on and so forth. And then at the bottom, we can see the properties. We can see the data lake storage. And then we can also check the file service, security, networking, and so on. So that's basically how we can create the ADLS. Now I want to create a container into in the ADLS. So I'm going to come under the storage tab and click on containers. And then, of course, I can click on this container to create it in a container. So I'm going to give it a meaningful name. Let's just call it Fabric 
container and then i can go on and click on create fabric so container is created now that's love i can click on that and access the content basically i've got no file so i can upload a file from a desktop or i can even add a subfolder in form of directory so i'm going to add over to this Microsoft Excel window. Basically, this is a data in form of comma separated values. So we've got the order ID, order date, ship date, customer name, account manager name, city, product unit, and the price. Now, it is important that your columns do not have space because we're going to be loading finally after I create a short code, we're going to load data into Delta Tab in the lake house. So this must be either um, with underscore or combine so you shouldn't have any space in between your column name that is really really important so i can go on and get or upload the file into my container so i'm going to head over to the container so i'm going to click on add directory i'm going to call this on sales data and then click save okay so the sales data directory is created i'm going to click on that to access the content i can click on the upload and then i'm going to click on browse and i'm going to select the file in it so double click on that and click on upload so there we go successfully uploaded blobs so we have a data set and of course we can even investigate the data i'm going to click on the f transaction.csv and then i can see the overview including the url the last modified creation dates and so on and so forth I'll click on the edit and then i can see the content I can... okay so i'm going to close this window for now the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and it's a shortcut in our link apps so I'm going to come to the Synapse Data Engineering. And of course, I've got this ADLS shortcut workspace created. So I'm going to just come at the bottom here and switch to the same data engineering experience. And then I can go on and create link house. So click on the link house. And then I'm just going to call this um, ADLS link house and click create. The link house is created. And of course, we have no files. So we can go on and create our shortcut. I'm going to click on this ellipsis and select nail shortcuts. I've got a video on how we can connect externally to this Amazon S3. So I'm going to put the link in the description below. And I'm going to focus on the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So I'm going to click on that. And then we can go on and specify the connection. So this is like a linked service in the Microsoft Azure. So I'm going to show you how to create a new connection. So click on new connection. The connection settings, we need to provide the URL and then the connection name and the authentication kind. So for the URL, I'm going to head over to my freak and I'm going to switch back to that container, the storage account anyway. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to actually click on endpoint. I'm going to scroll down and I want to focus on the data leak storage so we can see the resource ID, the primary endpoint. So this is exactly what we need. So fabric shortcut 101.dfx.core.windows.net. So I'm going to copy that and add back to my connection in the fabric control B to paste. And then we can go on and specify the authentication kind. So I'm going to click on this. Now, I want to actually use the account key. So choose that. And then for the account key, I'm going to add back to my storage account. And I'm going to scroll up. And I'm going to come to the security plus networking environment and choose access keys. So when I click on that, I can go on and copy either the key one or key two. So I'm going to click on the show and copy to the clipboard and go back to the connection in the fabric so i can go on and control v to paste the key click on next the connection is actually working fine and i can access my fabric container exactly what we have um in it so what i have here um fabric container that's lovely and then i can click on this chevron icon I can see the sales data so i can click on that double click and there we go we can see the f transaction that says the file amazing now to select i'm going to click on this and then choose next and then we can see in this intermediate step we have the shortcut name sales data the source which is fabric container and the sales data and then we can see the status yet to create and then we can choose the actions so i want to click on create we have the sales data shortcut that is connecting to our adls gen 2 i can 
double click and then I can see the F transaction to see the file. So I'm gonna click on this ellipsis again and I can load to a delta table and I can begin to query the data. So I wanna choose new table and then I can choose a name. Let's just call it sales transaction. And of course, I can click on load. So I'm gonna wait for a few minutes and then I should be able to see the new table in the tables drop down here. Lovely. So we can see the sales transaction. And of course, this is how we can easily create the shortcut to our ADLS Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. Super cool. Now I can come at it from the lake house to SQL analytics endpoints. Okay, so we have the data set. And of course, when I come back to the PowerPoint, I can see that we've actually gone through this Azure and then we created our ADLS Gen 2. And then this actually creates an external shortcut. So we have the shortcuts to the lake house. And then we can go on and perform data analysis using the Power BI. So I'm gonna go back. So I can click on this new measure to write some DAX. So let's wanna calculate the total unit. I'm gonna type in total units. And then I can use the sum function. So I wanna take the unit column and then close the brackets and press enter. I'm gonna click on the new measure and I wanna count the number of transactions. I'm gonna call this number of transactions. So I'm gonna type in equals. So I can use the count rows function to count all the rows in the sales transaction table, close the bracket and press enter to commit. So I can scroll down. I should be able to see the two measures created. So we have the total unit and the number of transactions. So we can create more, but anyway, I think that should be enough. So we can go ahead and create a new report. Okay, there we go. So we have the sales transaction. So I'm gonna click on this sales transaction and the units by account manager. So this creates the unit by account manager. So I can control C and control V to create another visual and I can replace this account manager with, let's wanna see by our products. So I'm gonna take the product anyway, it's the product list. And there we go. So I can move this product ID just above here. So I'm going to right click and rename for this visual. So I'm going to call this on products and pre press enter. And of course, we can even switch from this table visual to let's see, you want to see the cluster bar chart. Okay, there we go. So we have the cluster bar chart, the total unit by cluster bar chart, and then we have the table. And of course, we can even see the number of transactions in form of a card. So I'm going to drop that here and switch to the card. So there we go, we have 1,200 transactions. I can create the ADLS Jet 2 in the Microsoft Azure platform, and then we can create shortcuts to that data in the Fabric Leak House for analysis in the Power BI. So we've gone through all these stages, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.